Elizabeth Holmes is undoubtedly one of the most infamous fraudsters alive today. Her company Theranos claimed to have developed a revolutionary technology that could test for a wide range of diseases with just a finger prick of blood. As it turns out, it was all a lie. Investors lost billions of dollars, and Holmes is currently serving an 11-year prison sentence. There's another case of fraud that's not nearly as well known, but perhaps just as interesting. In October of 2023, a man named Mark Sheena was sentenced to 8 years in prison for securities and healthcare fraud. Sheena was the president of a medical testing company called Arrayit, which turned out to be a near total fraud. If we look at the two cases, there are uncanny similarities. Both Elizabeth Holmes and Mark Sheena attended Stanford University. Both wore black turtlenecks, apparently inspired by Steve Jobs. Theranos claimed to have developed a test that could test for hundreds of diseases with just a single drop of blood. At various times, Arrayit claimed that it could test for ovarian cancer, allergies, and COVID with just a few drops of blood. And finally, both Elizabeth Holmes and Mark Sheena currently reside in federal prison. You might think that after the high-profile collapse of Theranos, investors would have learned to be more skeptical of fantastic new medical technologies. But just a few years later, many investors fell for a very similar scam that, if anything, was even more obvious. Mark Sheena received his PhD in biochemistry from Stanford University in the 1990s and worked there as a postdoctoral research fellow for a number of years. At Stanford, he researched microarray technology. This involves putting thousands of microscopic pieces of DNA onto a piece of glass to be analyzed simultaneously. He was reasonably well respected in his field and even co authored a paper in Science Magazine. In 1999, he left Stanford to work for a biotech startup called Arrayit. Arrayit promised to use microarray technology to revolutionize healthcare as we know it. Arrayit's original goal was to create a DNA test which could be given to newborn babies. It would determine what genetic diseases they are likely to develop later on in life. In 2001, Sheena made an appearance on a PBS documentary called Cracking the Code of Life, where he discussed Arrayit's mission. Each chip can support 80,000 different DNA tests. So a single chip, in principle, will allow you to test, say, a thousand babies for 80 different human diseases. So within a few minutes, you can have a readout for thousands or even tens of thousands of babies in a single experiment. Already, babies are routinely tested for a handful of diseases, but with gene chips, everybody could be tested for hundreds of conditions. Knowing is great, knowing early is even better, and that's really what the technology allows us, us to do. The microarray technology that Array developed wasn't nearly as advanced as Sheena made it out to be in that documentary. It didn't have the capability of testing babies for hundreds of genetic diseases. As we'll see, throughout Mark Sheena's career, he often has a habit of exaggeration. In 2008, Mark Sheena became the president of Arrayit. His wife Renee Sheena became the CEO. While Renee was technically the CEO, it appears that Mark was the mastermind during all relevant periods. Arrayit's plan to test infants for hundreds of genetic diseases failed, so they moved on to a new product. They started working on a revolutionary new test that can detect stage 1 ovarian cancer with just a few drops of blood. In 2014, Array attended a conference hosted by the National Investment Banking Association, trying to find investors to fund their FDA trial. Here's a clip of Renee Sheena speaking at the event. Hello members of NEBA, I'm proud to introduce you to Array Corporation and we've developed a test for ovarian cancer which can detect stage 1 of ovarian cancer. Uh, with just a few drops of blood. We're putting this product through the FDA approval process. We expect to, it to be a two-phase process. We're raising, uh, we already raised two, and a, two million dollars to do the first phase, and we'll be raising another 10 million to complete the second phase of the process. This ovarian cancer test they were supposedly developing never received FDA approval and was never commercialized. The next year, in 2015, Mark Sheena attended that same conference, also trying to raise money. It's fantastic. So now, how would uh, you know anyone that wasn't at this conference now um, able to get in touch with you? You have a website, email sure. address? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, www.arrayit.com is our website. Uh, we receive more than a million visitors each month. Um, he says Arrayit's website has over one million visitors each month. This is absurd. Arrayit was a tiny penny stock company. There's zero chance that its website received 1 million visitors per month. It doesn't even make sense for a biotech company to brag about, or even keep track of how many people visit their website. 
The fact that Mark Shino lies about something so dumb gives us a glimpse into his mindset. Whenever he's talking to potential investors, his default setting is to always exaggerate everything to make his company look as good as possible. He would also reportedly tell people that he was on a short list to receive a Nobel Prize, which of course was not true. Having failed to generate significant revenue, Array relied primarily on issuing new shares to fund its operations. As investors lost confidence in the company, their share price collapsed to almost nothing. In late 2015, they stopped filing financial statements with the SEC. They were traded on over-the-counter markets, so didn't need to worry about listing requirements. After the failure of the ovarian cancer test, Array shifted its attention to making allergy tests. Here's a short clip of Mark Sheena explaining the company's allergy test to a local news station in November of 2019. Uh, explain exactly how this test works. Sure, so this test is very much in keeping with our corporate mission of bringing technology to healthcare, and specifically what I mean by that is we are leveraging our proprietary microarray technology to advance allergy testing. Microarrays are miniaturized testing devices. Um, each individual allergy test on the array allergy test is approximately the width of a human hair. And when you miniaturize the testing device, you can greatly reduce the amount of patient specimen that's required to run the test. So in traditional blood testing, needles and large vials of blood are required. In the array allergy test, we take a finger stick and four to five drops of blood. And with that small amount of patient specimen, we can profile 120 different allergens. And how many patients so far have been tested? Yeah, a, a large number. We've run um, millions of individual allergy tests. Okay, and how accurate? Uh, it's very accurate. <laughs> so in greater than 99% of the patients who report symptoms, we've been able to pinpoint the cause of the allergy or asthma. Oh. In traditional blood testing, you need large vials of blood. But with Array, it's revolutionary new technology, they only need a finger prick and a few drops of blood. Array, it's allergy test has uncanny similarities to Theranos, which also claim to only need a finger prick of blood. In fact, Array explicitly compared itself to Theranos. They bragged that their microarray test worked on samples of blood 250,000 times smaller than the volume of the Theranos nanotainer. They also started selling something called the Pinner Test. You're supposed to mail them a few drops of your blood and they'll run tests to see what types of food you're intolerant to. They paid a bunch of B-list celebrities and social media influencers to promote the Pinner Test. The test was not FDA approved and likely little more than snake oil. At the time, BuzzFeed did an investigation where they talked to scientists about the Pinner test. The scientists said that there was no evidence that it can detect food intolerances. It may just detect which food you've eaten recently. In some cases, the same customer would order multiple tests and get different results. By this point, the company was still not publishing audited financial statements, but they continued to communicate with investors via press releases, email, and Twitter. They were extremely active on Twitter. It was not uncommon for them to post more than 10 tweets in a single day. Their account has over 13,000 tweets in total. Array made numerous false and misleading statements on its Twitter account. For example, in August of 2018, they elliptically referred to a $2.5 million clinical services sales request from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. In reality, Array never had any contract with the VA. Array indeed bidded on an $840,000 VA contract, but their bid was rejected. It's interesting to note the strange language they use. Array reports $2.5 million clinical services sales requests from the VA. But what does this even mean? They throw out a big number to get investors excited, but they make the wording vague and weird. Perhaps Sheena thought this elliptical language would help him evade prosecution. Around that same time, they also put out a tweet saying they are manufacturing $240 million worth of test kits. This was completely absurd. They didn't have the funds to do anything like this. In reality, they were running out of cash and struggling to pay rent on their office building. Also, many of Array's tweets included stock photos of attractive models. It's unclear why they did this. In early 2019, there was a massive increase in Array's stock price. The main reason for this was bullish guidance provided by the company. In March of 2019, Array said they expected to generate $2 million per week of medical billings. Mark Sheena also told investors that they expected to finally file audited financial statements in the first quarter of 2019. The stock price peaked at 20 cents per share, more than quadruple the price it traded at just a few months prior. Unfortunately for anyone who bought into the hype, Array's financial situation was far worse than what Mark Sheena tried to portray. In reality, Array was nowhere near the $2 million per week billings guidance. 
In January, they billed insurance providers for $1.6 million, $1.9 million in February, and $2.7 million in March. Also, most of their billings to insurance providers were denied. The company only received $74,000 in January, $80,000 in February, and $114,000 in March. This minuscule revenue was not nearly enough to fund their operations. By this point, Array was almost bankrupt. They resorted to paying many of their employees in stock because they had almost no cash on hand. It's important to remember that during this period, Array was not publishing audited financial statements at all. The only information that investors had to go on was their tweets and press releases. Mark Sheena claimed that Array would file its financial statements for the first quarter of 2019. In reality, they were stonewalling their auditor, and there was no way they could produce audited financial statements in a timely manner. When Array failed to file financial statements as promised, its share price collapsed. In the spring of 2020, the pandemic catalyzed massive demand for COVID tests. Companies that could make COVID tests were huge beneficiaries. Array had never made a test for any virus before, and lacked the expertise to make a reliable COVID test. Despite this, Mark Sheena wasted little time in pursuing this cash grab. On March 17, 2020, just weeks after the pandemic began, Sheena started emailing medical clinics saying that Array had developed a COVID-19 test based on advanced Silicon Valley technology and finger prick blood collection. At this time, Array did not even have in its possession the COVID-19 antigens that would be required to make a COVID test. Thus, when Sheena claimed he had already developed a test, it was literally impossible that they even could have started developing a test. Array also told potential customers that the test accuracy was comparable to or better than existing PCR tests. At the time they made this claim, their test did not yet exist. Sheena also got busy hyping up the COVID testing opportunity to investors. He engaged in numerous email correspondences with investors, claiming that the company had a COVID test. By April, the company had indeed developed a COVID test, but its accuracy was highly questionable and it was not FDA approved. Without an emergency use authorization, they were not legally allowed to sell them. Of course, they did anyway. Array's main goal was for people to purchase both the COVID-19 test as well as their 120-panel allergen test, which was far more expensive. They distributed marketing materials falsely claiming that this approach was recommended by the CDC. This was not true. The CDC never recommended that people should get allergy tests if they suspect they have COVID. Sometimes, when doctors would order only a COVID test, Array would also conduct an allergy test that was not ordered, and send the bill to Medicaid. The COVID testing narrative created a temporary spike in Array's stock price in March of 2020. In April, the SEC halted trading in the stock as they flagged it as a potential pump and dump. Once trading resumed, the share price collapsed. Just a few months later, the SEC filed civil charges against Mark Sheena. He was subsequently indicted on charges of securities and healthcare fraud. In October of 2023, he was sentenced to eight years in prison and forced to pay $24 million of restitution. Renee Sheena got off relatively lightly. She settled with the SEC paying a $50,000 penalty and agreeing not to be an officer or director of a public company for the next three years. It doesn't appear that she's been indicted on any criminal charges at all. The government likely views her as a passive accomplice. While she was technically the CEO, her husband Mark Sheena was a mastermind responsible for orchestrating the fraud. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about Mark Sheena? Does he give you flashbacks to Elizabeth Holmes? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.